What up? This is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment. And here's my review of Netflix series Lucifer New Season 5 Part 1. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you would like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this. First up, I would like to say thank you to Netflix for granting me the screener to the entire eight episodes of this first part of this new season. They've asked me to not spill any spoilers, therefore, this video review is spoiler free. I repeat, there are no spoilers in this video review. Oh my god, I freaking love this show. I kid you not. I have religiously watched it since it was on Fox, and now that it's on Netflix, Lucifer has even gotten bolder and better. I didn't doubt it really because many of the original team writers did stick around and continue to provide Lucifer with his irresistible charms and addictive sex-fueled brand of cocky humor where he always says the first thing that pops into his head and luckily, Netflix is a more lenient platform which allows our lead protagonist to be extra deviant. So yes, I'm happy that the new season is here. Even more happy that it has been renewed for another one after this. So drinks all around, people. Cheers. As you all know, this season 5 is divided into two parts each consisting of eight episodes. The second part is expected to arrive sometime next year, but the whole pandemic kind of interrupted that production. So who knows when they'll get around to wrapping that up. This first part is every bit as awesome as I had hoped. I must warn you though, even though I won't be spilling spoilers, most of what I'll be talking about on this video is just for you, my fellow Lucifer series hardcore fans. So if you haven't followed the show from the beginning, you might want to wear some earmuffs. Lucifer, bored and unhappy as the Lord of Hell, resigns his throne and abandons his kingdom for the gorgeous simmering insanity of Los Angeles, where he gets his kicks helping the LAPD and the savvy detective Chloe Decker in particular. In this part one of season five, Lucifer's twin brother Michael secretly takes the devil's place on earth while he's back in hell. Eventually, Lucifer must return and face the mess his brother made with his life. He'll also finally confront his feelings for Chloe and answer the will they, won't they question that fans have been asking since the very beginning. Okay, Netflix gave me a few bullet points of things that I should not share in my review, so I'll do my best to dance around them and give you bird's eye view thoughts for the most part. But here are some of the things that you do know. You do know that Lucifer's twin brother, Archangel Michael, is in town. It's in the trailers, so don't jump me. It's not a spoiler. You also do know that things are heating up between Lucifer and Chloe, romantically speaking that is. That part is also in the trailers, but not nearly half of what this season unpacks. As far as Michael goes, well, let's see. In the previous seasons, we had Lucifer's mom, aka Charlotte, and then we had Cain, and then we had Eve and Father Kinley last year. So when it comes to being another element that gives Lucifer a hard time, I'd say Michael is more formidable than those other characters that I just mentioned. He wants to be Lucifer. He wants everything that Lucifer has. And he's got that mindset of, if I can't have it, no one can. Seeing Tom Ellis play dual roles in this season is pretty interesting. You'll definitely notice some of the mannerism and the accent and the physical attributes that he's rocking here in order to help you differentiate or tell those two apart. Tom has become so comfortable in the skin of his character, he knows it inside out, he can turn it on and off just like that. So much so that he can now jump back and forth between two characters 
and make it look so easy. But Tom isn't the only one having fun. The other cast members also get to do some role playing in the classical sense. Speaking of whom, there are some mighty big reveals going on with the supporting characters as well. Some of them are quite earth shattering. The kind that makes you wonder, oh man, how the hell, pun intended, is he or she gonna get back from this? Just when you thought you knew everything there is to know about Amenadiel, Dan, Chloe, Ella, Linda, Mazakin, the writers managed to add another layer to their background or their personality or their love life that makes them even more complicated and fascinating. And it all leads to a divinely epic episode 8 where the line is drawn in the sand. The whole Chloe and Lucifer being all romantic, I guess I'm okay with that. But if you ask for my honest opinion, I always like it better when the two leads have that unrequited sexual tension. Just like Mulder and Scully were a much better team back when they were not lovey-dovey at each other. But hey, I understand that this is the direction that they have to take their story to. And don't worry, everything you love about this show remains intact. The procedural murder cases that say something about whatever it is that Lucifer is personally dealing with at that moment. But because there are only eight episodes, the overarching celestial arc has to take priority, which I don't think you'll mind because the way that they intertwine both aspects for this one is devilishly wicked. Pun intended again. All right, that's it. That's all I'm allowed to say about this first part of season 5. It's exciting, it's thrilling, it pulls no punches, figuratively and literally. Yes, 8 episodes are not enough. By the end of it, it does leave me craving for more. Damn it, why can't we have the whole thing already? But you know what? For now, my god, these 8 episodes will have you be geeking out. I guarantee it.